This problem walkthrough video will demonstrate how to use what if analysis in Microsoft Excel to analyze profitability and replenishment levels for virtual reality goggle inventory. Here's the data for our problem. Galaxy Company sells virtual reality or VR goggles targeted to customers who like to play video games. Galaxy procures each pair of goggles for $150 from its supplier and sells each pair of goggles for $30. Monthly demand for the VR goggles is a normal random variable with a mean of 200 units and the standard deviation of 50 units. At the beginning of each month, Galaxy orders enough goggles from its supplier to bring the inventory level up to 180 goggles. If the monthly demand is less than 180, Galaxy pays $20 per pair of goggles that remains in inventory at the end of the month. If the monthly demand exceeds 180, Galaxy sells only the 180 pairs of goggles in stock. Galaxy assigns a shorted cost of $40 for each unit of demand that is unsatisfied to represent a loss of goodwill among its customers. Management would like to use a simulation model to analyze the situation. The data has been collected in a Microsoft Excel file, so download the spreadsheet and complete the following requirements. Requirement A is to determine the average monthly profit resulting from its policy of stocking 180 goggles at the beginning of each month. Requirement B is to determine the total proportion of months in which demand is completely satisfied. Requirement C asks us to use the simulation model to compare the profitability of monthly replenishment levels of 105, 180, and 215 goggles and to determine which monthly replenishment level maximizes profitability. We're also directed to use the corresponding 95% confidence intervals on the average profit to make our comparison. Let's open up our downloaded Excel data file and complete the requirements. Cells B4 through B11 summarize the parameters for our problem, which include the wholesale and retail prices of the product, gross profit, holding cost, and shortage cost per unit, as well as the mean and standard deviation of demand. Let's begin by setting up our work area. I'll start by entering descriptions in cells A13 through A29, including replenishment level, monthly demand, units sold, unmet demand, excess inventory, monthly holding cost, monthly shortage cost, monthly net profit, mean monthly net profit, standard deviation of monthly net profit, number of trials, proportion of monthly demand met, 95% confidence interval, and lower and upper bound. In cells B14 through D14, I'll enter the replenishment levels we're asked to consider for our requirements. 180 in cell B14, 105 in cell C14, and 215 in cell D14, which I'll also make green. Now for requirement A, which is to determine the average monthly profit resulting from stocking 180 units. We'll start by generating some random monthly demand based on a normal distribution, since monthly demand is a normal random variable. Click on cell B15 and type the equal sign, then start typing round to bring up that function, so we can round our result to an even number. Select the function and press the tab key. Then start typing norm.inv to bring up that function. The norm.inv function returns the inverse of the normal cumulative distribution for a specified mean and standard deviation, which we have in this problem. Select the function or press the tab key. For the probability parameters, we will randomly generate a percentage probability using the rand function. So type rand to bring up the function. The rand function returns a random number between 0 and 1, or in our case, a probability between 0 and 100%, evenly distributed. Select the function to press the tab key, followed immediately by a closing parenthesis since the function has no parameters. Next, type a comma, and for the mean, select the mean of 200 in cell B10 and press F4 to lock in the cell reference so we can copy the resulting formula without error. Type another comma, and for the standard deviation parameter, select the standard deviation of 50 in cell B11, followed by F4 to lock it in. Now type a closing parenthesis to close the nested norm.inb function and type a comma, then enter zero to round our result to the nearest whole number with zero decimal places. Enter a closing parenthesis and press enter or return, and now I have a randomly generated demand of 256 units. This will be different for you, and it will change with every new calculation in the worksheet. Now for the unit sold, which will be the lesser of the randomly generated demand or the 180 unit replenishment level. Click on cell B16 and type an equal sign, then type min, M-I-N, to bring up the function. Select it from the list or press the tab key, or manually enter an opening parenthesis. Then, for number 1, click the 180-unit replenishment level in cell B14, followed by a comma. 
then select the monthly demand cell B15. Enter a closing parenthesis and press enter or return and the lesser of the two amounts should appear. Next for the unmet demand, which is the higher of either zero if demand is less than or equal to the replenishment level or the difference between the monthly demand and the replenishment level if the monthly demand exceeds the replenishment level. Click on cell B17, type the equal sign, then type max MAX to bring up the function. Select it from the list or press the tab key and for number one, enter zero, followed by a comma. For number two, click on the monthly demand cell B15, followed by a minus sign, then select the replenishment level cell B14. Type a closing parenthesis and press enter or return. My result is unmet demand of zero, which makes sense since the currently random demand is 133 units and that's less than the 180 unit replenishment level. Demand is less than inventory, so no shortage exists. Next, for the excess inventory, which is the higher of either zero, if demand is greater than or equal to the replenishment level, or the difference between the monthly demand and the replenishment level, if the replenishment level exceeds the monthly demand. Click on cell B18, type the equal sign, then type max to bring up the function, press the tab key, enter zero for number one, followed by a comma, then select the replenishment level cell B14, followed by a minus sign, then select the monthly demand cell B15. Press enter or return, and the result for me is now zero, which also makes sense, since the replenishment level of 180 units is less than the demand of 219 units, so there's no excess inventory. Also notice that now I have a result for unmet demand, since the demand exceeds the replenishment level, and now there is a shortage. We're setting up this model so that there is either unmet demand or excess inventory, but not both. Now we can determine the holding cost, which is simply the excess inventory multiplied by the holding cost per unit. Click on cell B19, type the equal sign, select the excess inventory calculation in cell B18, followed by the multiplication sign, and select the holding cost per unit of $20 in cell B7, followed by F4 to lock it in. Press enter or return, and my result is zero because there's no excess inventory with the currently generated monthly demand. Next is the monthly shortage cost calculation. Click on cell B20, type the equal sign, and select the unmet demand calculation in cell B17, followed by the multiplication sign, and click on the shortage cost per unit of $40 in cell B8, followed by F4 to lock it in. Press enter or return. Now I have a shortage cost of $1,800 because the monthly demand of 225 units exceeds the replenishment level of 180 units, resulting in unmet demand of 45 units which is then multiplied by $40. The holding cost is zero since there's no excess inventory when there is a shortage. Now for the monthly net profit, which is the gross profit, less the holding and shortage costs. Click on cell B21, type the equal sign, and select the gross profit per unit of $150 in cell B6, and press F4 to lock the reference. Type a multiplication sign, then select the unit sold in cell B16, followed by a minus sign. Select the monthly holding cost in cell B19, followed by another minus sign, and select the monthly shortage cost in cell B20. Press enter or return. My monthly net profit is currently $25,480. This is based on 180 units sold, since the replenishment level is less than demand, so everything sells out. This results in a shortage of 38 units. The gross profit of 180 units times $150 is $27,000, and then we subtract the associated shortage cost of $1,520, which results in net profit of $25,480. We know our model works. And that actually satisfies requirement A, which we'll summarize again later. I'll shade our work cells B15 through B21 blue and copy those cells by clicking and dragging the little green square over to column C and D in preparation for requirement C later on. Now on to requirement B, where we want to determine the proportion of months in which demand is completely satisfied. And to do this, we need to use what-if analysis and set up some random trials. Let's create a new worksheet by clicking the plus sign at the bottom next to the model tab, and let's name it trials. I'll enter some headings to help organize our sheet. In cell E2, I'll enter trial. In cell B1, unmet, and in cell B2, demand. 
In cell C1, I'll type profit at replenishment level. Then I'll select cells C1 through E1 and select merge and center from the alignment group in the home ribbon. In cells C2, D2, and E2, I'll link the different replenishment levels in the model tab. Click on cell C2 and type the equal sign. Then click on the model tab to go back to our model worksheet and select the 180 unit replenishment level in cell C14. Press enter or return and we should see 180 units. Then click back on cell C2 and copy that over to cells D2 and E2 by clicking and dragging the little green square over. Now I'll make the headings all boldface. And now to set up our trials. Enter 1 in cell A3 and 2 in cell A4. Then select cells A3 and A4 and click and drag the little green square all the way down to row 1002 to generate the numbers 1 to 1000. Next, go back up to the top and for unmet demand, click on cell B3, type the equal sign, then click the model tab to take us back to the model worksheet and select the unmet demand cell B17 and press enter or return. For the profit at the different replenishment levels, first click on cell C3 associated with 180 units. Type the equal sign, then click the model tab to go back to the model worksheet and select the monthly net profit in cell B21 associated with 180 units. Press enter or return and the net profit should be transferred over. Copy cell C3 over to cells D3 and E3 by clicking on cell C3, then click and drag the little green square over to the right. Now we have the profits at all replenishment levels linked to our model. Now for the trials. Select all the cells A3 through E1002, but make sure you do not include the header rows 1 and 2. Select the data menu from the menu bar and in the forecast group and the ribbon, click the what if analysis button and from the drop down list that appears, select data table. The data table dialog should pop up. Leave the row input cell box blank and for column input cell, select cell A1 and then press OK. And presto, we have a thousand random trials. Now let's go back to our model worksheet and answer requirement B. For the mean monthly net profit, we're going to calculate this based on our 1000 trials. Click on cell B23, type the equal sign, then start typing average to bring up the function, select it or press the tab key. For our range, we want the average range of the trials associated with the 180 unit replenishment level. So click on the trials tab to take us back to the trials worksheet and click on cell C3. You could now manually select the cells all the way down to cell C1002, but since we know that's where our data ends, you can just type a colon, then C1002, followed by a closing parenthesis, and then press enter or return. We're taken back to the model worksheet and an average profit of the trials is calculated. Next, for the standard deviation, we can calculate that because we have a robust set of sample data. Click on cell B24, type the equal sign, and start typing stdev.s, which estimates the standard deviation based on a sample. Press the tab key, and for number one, we want to go back to our trial sheet and select the same cell range C3 through C1002, or just type C3 colon C1002, followed by a closing parenthesis. Press enter or return, and we're taken back, and now we have a standard deviation. I'll select cells B23 and B24 and format them as currency with no decimal places. At this point with the current randomized demand, the average net profit is $23,677 with a standard deviation of $3,395. For the number of trials, click on cell B25, type the equal sign, and type count to bring up that function. Press the tab key or select it from the list. Now you could click on the trials tab and go back to that worksheet and select the cell range, but I'll show you how to enter that manually. Type trials exactly the way the worksheet is labeled, immediately followed by an exclamation mark. This tells Excel you're referring to the worksheet called trials. Then enter the range C3 through C1002 by typing C3 colon C1002. This just counts how many items there are. Enter closing parenthesis, followed by a return or enter, and now I have 1,000 as the number of trials, which I know is correct. Next, we can calculate the proportion or the number of trials from the total that met monthly demand. Click on cell B26, type the equal sign, then type count if to bring up that function. Press the tab key or select from the list. 
For our range, we want cells B3 through B1002 from the trials worksheet, which has our unmet demand data. So either click the trials tab and select the cells B3 through B1002, or simply type trials exclamation mark B3 colon B1002. Then type a comma, and for the criteria type zero, followed by a closing parenthesis. Then type the divide sign and click the number of trials in cell B25. Press enter or return, and I end up with a result of 0.351, which I'll format as a percentage. Now, I'll take the work I did for the 180 unit replenishment level and copy that over to the other levels. Select cells B23 through B25 and click and drag the little green square over to column C and D, and our data is nicely filled in. I'll shade cells B21 and B25 green, since those are the answers we're looking for in requirement B, and I'll shade the other cells blue. Now for requirement C, where we want to determine the upper and lower bounds for a 95% confidence interval, and also to determine the replenishment level which produces the maximum profit. Click on cell B28 and type the equal sign, then select the mean monthly net profit cell B23 and type the minus sign. Then type confidence.t to bring up that function. The confidence.t function returns the confidence interval for a population using a student's t distribution. Press the tab key or select the function. For the alpha value, since we're dealing with a 95% confidence level, then alpha is 5% or 0.05, so enter 0.05 followed by a comma. For the standard deviation, select the standard deviation we calculated in cell B24, followed by another comma. Then for the size, select the number of trials in cell B25. Enter a closing parenthesis and press enter or return. Finally, for the upper bound, click on cell B29, type the equal sign, select the monthly net profit in cell B23 followed by a plus sign. Then type confidence.t again to bring up the function, and enter the same parameters, 0.05 for alpha, comma, B24 for the standard deviation, comma, then B25 for the number of trials. Enter a closing parenthesis, followed by enter or return, and we have an upper bound. I'll format those by selecting cells B28 and B29 and selecting currency from the drop down menu in the number group in the ribbon and eliminate the decimal places. I'll also copy those formulas over to cells C28 through D29 by clicking and dragging the little green square. Then I'll shade cells B28 through C29 blue and cells D28 and D29 green. And now we're finished. If you press F9 to generate different results, you'll see the numbers change, but the proportion in cell B26 range consistently between 30 and 38%, and the replenishment level of 215 always produces the highest monthly net profit. Now let's summarize our answers for our requirements. For requirement A, based on my final randomly generated results and trials, my average monthly net profit for stocking 180 goggles is 23,747. For requirement B, the proportion of months in which demand is completely satisfied is 30%. For requirement C, the simulation model that maximizes profitability is 215 units. And the lower and upper bounds for a 95% confidence interval on the average profit at the optimal replenishment level of 215 units is 26,511 and 27,175 respectively.